Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. In other words, we have this equation x over y plus 7 plus y over x plus 7 equals 1. And we're actually going to be looking for positive integer solutions. And this problem comes from Turkish Math Olympiads. Pretty easy problem, so manageable. And that's why I wanted to share with you. Let's go ahead and take a look. Now, we have x over y plus 7 plus y over x plus 7 equals 1. And we're going to be solving for x and y values. And just remember that x and y are positive integers. I can't remember if the original statement of the problem said that they are positive, but I think they're supposed to be positive integers. But if you wanted to solve for integer solutions instead, it's going to be very, very similar. Okay? So let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, when we get a Diophantine equation, one of the things that you do is looking at modular arithmetic, see if you can reduce the problem, uh, you know, to something manageable. Or in this case, since we have, we have fractions, uh, let's make a common denominator. So let's multiply the x by x plus 7 and the y by y plus 7, add them up. And then the common denominator is going to be x plus 7 times y plus 7. And this quotient is going to equal 1, which means the top and the bottom are equal. So let's go ahead and distribute x squared plus 7x plus y squared plus 7y. And then the bottom part is xy plus 7x plus 7y plus 49, which is 7 times 7, right? So some terms are going to cancel out, such as 7x plus 7y. And we're going to end up with something like this. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. So I'm going to go ahead and bring uh, the xy. Maybe I will just write it like, yeah, I think this is fine. Plus y squared, and now I'm going to go ahead and subtract 49, and that's going to equal 0. Great. What does this look like to you? First of all, if I didn't put the 49 on the left-hand side and just left it like this, right, then this should look like something you are familiar with. This is kind of part of uh, an expression that's called sum of two cubes. So if you think about the formula for x cubed plus y cubed, yes, this is one of them. So you could kind of do the following. Multiply both sides by x plus y, and then you'll get something like this. Now, do you think this would be easier to solve? I doubt it. But again, you can still try to solve it. I just want to show you real quick what this can turn into, but let's go ahead and focus on this now. So that's our Diophantine equation, and we're going to be solving it using a very interesting method, which is commonly used with Diophantine equations, and that is turning this into a quadratic equation. Notice that we can write this as a quadratic in x or y, doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and write it as a quadratic in x. So here's what I'm going to do. x squared minus, I'm going to write this as yx, so I'm trying to basically emphasize the fact that this is going to be quadratic in x. Make sense? Okay, so I have x squared minus yx, and then it'll be followed by y squared minus 49 equals 0. In this case, notice that y is a constant and y squared minus 49 is a constant, right? That's why this is quadratic in x. But we can solve it using quadratic formula. What else can we use, right? I mean, you can try to factor or complete the square, but let's use the quadratic formula. And by using quadratic formula, we're going to get negative b plus minus the square root of b squared. In this case, the coefficient of x is negative y. So that's going to be y squared minus 4 times y squared minus 49. Great. So the expression inside the radical is super important because it's called the discriminant or delta. Great. So delta is supposed to be y squared minus 4y squared plus 196, which can be simplified as 196 minus 3y squared. Now, you want integer solutions, actually positive integer solutions. So x is a positive integer. Therefore, the expression inside the radical needs to be a perfect square. Because when we take the square root, it needs to come out. And then we're going to add it to y plus minus divided by 2. And we still need to get a positive integer. But let's focus on this being a perfect square now. So let's go ahead and set this discriminant equal to 
something like z squared, where z is an integer. Make sense? Okay. Now let's go ahead and put z and y on the same side. Again, this is another Diophantin equation, but very easy to solve. And you can actually turn this into a linear Diophantin equation because you can set z squared and y squared equal to other variables and that'll be linear. Make sense? But first of all, I want you to notice that 3y squared cannot be 196, right? Obviously, you don't want z squared equal 0 because we're looking for positive integers, but maybe 0 for z will give us a positive integer solution because it looks like y can be positive. But the problem is 196 is not divisible by 3, so 3y squared cannot be 196 and z cannot be 0. Okay? Cool. We skipped that case, which means 3y squared needs to be less than 196 because the sum of two positive quantities is 196. Make sense? And this kind of means that y squared, think about it. If y squared is 65, 3y squared is going to be 195, and you're still going to be less than 196. So we can pretty much say that y squared needs to be less than 65. But the problem is, if y squared is 65, you're going to be okay. Make sense? Because in that case, you're still going to be less than 196. Now, if y squared is less than or equal to 65, think about perfect squares that are less than or equal to 65. The highest one is 8. So we can safely say that y is less than or equal to 8, since we're only focusing on positive integer solutions. Make sense? Okay, great. So that kind of gives us an upper bound, which is nice. And then we also know that, remember the formula, x equals y plus minus the square root of 196 minus 3y squared. This was the discriminant. I just simplified it, right? And now, since this is z squared, the expression from here is going to be x equals y plus minus z over 2. So that's how we can find x once we find y and z. Make sense? Great. Let's get to work. So I'm going to start with y equals 8. y equals 8 gives me z equals 2. By, by the way, how did I get that? From this equation, if you replace y with 8, you're going to get 64 times 3 is 192. Subtract, you get 4, and z is supposed to be 2. Obviously, negative 2 is a solution too, but I'm just going to go with the positive solutions here, okay? So y equals 8 gives us z equals 2, and that gives us either, actually, that gives us two solutions for x, and I'm going to leave the details red up to you, x equals 5 and x equals 3. Now, if y is equal to 7, then from here, z is going to be 7, and that means x equals 7. Nice. If y equals 6, then we're not getting anything, right? If y equals 5, we're getting z equals 11, which implies x equals 8. Again, you can verify these. If y is equal to 4, we don't get anything too bad, right? And then if y is equal to 3, then z is equal to 13. That means x is equal to 8 again but for a different y this time. If y is 2, uh-oh, we're not going to get anything. If y is equal to 1, again, we're not going to get anything. Too bad. So these are the workable good solutions. And let's go ahead and put them as ordered pairs, and we'll just finish up with that, okay? So the solution set may, is made up of 5, 8. And by the way, that's like an x, y. 3, 8, 7, 7, 8, 5, and 8, 3. So there are five solutions. I hope I didn't miss any of them. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.